I welcome you all to the last module of this course that is module number 12 and uh, this module uh, will be talking about some applied aspect of emotional intelligence more specifically. Uh, so, in this course will uh, in this particular module we will have three lectures and uh, today we will be talking about application of emotional intelligence in the workplace context. So, we will be talking more in the applied aspect of emotional intelligence. So, uh, today's lecture is actually lecture number 29 overall and the first lecture of module 12. So, just to give you a brief recap of what we uh, discussed in the last lecture. So, last lecture was on specific skill of emotional intelligence that is social skills and social intelligence which we discussed in the last lecture. So, last module was about uh, discussing very specific skills of emotional intelligence. So, in the last lecture uh, we discussed about social skills. In that context, we try to understand uh, how the concept of social intelligence and how it is connected to social skills. We discussed Goldman's model of social intelligence, where we discussed the different components of this model that is uh, social awareness and social facility and the different sub components of each of these uh, aspects of social intelligence. We also discussed uh, impact of social intelligence, social support system or relationships on various aspects of human health and well-being. We also discussed a convoy model of social network analysis where we try to understand how can we kind of analyze our network and support system using concentric circles of inner circle, middle circle and outer circles. And at the end we discussed how can we build social skills some of the uh, important uh, aspects of building social skills we discussed at the end of this uh, end of the last last lecture. So, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last lecture. Uh, so, today we will be talking about uh, workplace and emo and particularly how emotional intelligence as a construct is connected to the con workplace context. So, more applied aspect we will be looking ab about particularly in the context of workplace. So, we will be see, we will be looking at the utility of emotional intelligence as a concept in the workplace context, how useful this concept is and how this concept can be applied and more specifically we will be discussing the impact of emotional intelligence on various variables of uh, organizations and workplace context like job performance, job satisfaction, organizational attitude and behavior, leadership and organizational stress. So, we will be uh, more specifically talking about the impact of emotional intelligence in all of these workplace related variables. So, let us start today's lecture. So, what is the relevance of emotional intelligence as a concept in the workplace context? So, uh, generally you know uh, the various research in fact, a uh, lot of applied aspect of emotional intelligence and the researchers who are uh, uh, kind of engaged in the researching emotional intelligence. One of the most prominent area where emotional intelligence has found to be one of the most important aspect which can kind be applied in the workplace context and improve productivity and other aspects uh, is emotional intelligence. So, it is cited as, uh, com as one of the necessary component, it is cited as uh, one of the important uh, component of becoming a productive and fulfilled organizational citizens. So, this is kind of uh, most of the research shows this is a very important component in the workplace context and especially for productivity and uh, overall behavior of people engaged in the organization. Companies are basically increasingly looking for employees who are compassionate, dependable in the job, productive team players who care about both their co-workers and their job. So, ideally if you see all these things which are desirable in a workplace all these things are actually connected to the concept of emotional intelligence. A compassionate uh, employee, a dependable employee, productive team player, uh, an employee who cares for their co-workers and is a key team player, all these are actually connected to the concept of emotional intelligence. So, in diverse ways emotional intelligence can impact uh, organizational outputs, organizational behavior and so on. So, it is clear that uh, our emotional intelligence has become an essential component of the debate over effective organizational recruiting and placement, functioning leadership and training. In all these aspects uh, nowadays in various organization or corporate setting, people are looking at this concept of emotional intelligence in their employees. Uh, it could be in the recruitment phase, place, placement phase, you know, function uh, leadership phase or even training also. 
Now, all these aspects emotional intelligence uh, can kind, kind of find an important place in all the different aspect of organizational functioning. Now, how the concept of emotion is relevant in the workplace? Traditionally, uh, workplace has always been kind of removed from the emotions and it was looked at like a place where more logical thoughts and cognitive intelligence is the most important part where you need to perform and do your job. So, it was kind of removed from the emotions. Uh, that was a kind of traditional view uh, regarded as highly logical, rational, ordered setting, cognitive intelligence is the most important aspect of achievement in the job. So, that was something very uh, typically looked at workplace where emotions generally do not find any place in it. Generally, emotions were brushed over kind of uh, disparaged or relegated to a relatively lower, lower or subordinate role since they were considered as opposed to rationality. So, general idea is that you know emotions are kind of opposite to rationality. So, if somebody is emotional cannot be rational. So, in the workplace generally the emotion never kind of got the uh, significance or uh, right kind of place or this importance in the organizational setting. It was always considered as a subordinate or the kind of lower aspect. However, current research in the cognitive and emotional sciences reveals that emotions benefit reasons and are in fact required for accurate judgment and decision making. We have already devoted a whole module on uh, cognition and emotions, where we have very clearly seen that emotion can actually play a very important role and in many time in a very productive way or it can facilitate in fact, you know uh, thought processes, you know decision making, judgment and so on, even creativity and so on. So, emotions are kind of in recent researches are not looked at kind of always opposite to the rationality. In fact, they can facilitate cognitive aspects and kind of uh, uh, kind of you know uh, be looked at as, as an important aspect of cognitive functioning. Uh, we cannot completely remove it. So, emotion kind of is finding very significant place even in the cognitive realm. So, and all these th kind of findings and uh, research uh, you know findings related to this aspect we have already discussed in a whole module about cognitions and emotions. So, emotions can play a very significant role in uh, as a uh, as processing becomes more complicated especially when uh, we need to do lot of complicated processing of information emotion can play a very significant role in the decision making and other uh, judgment uh, aspects uh, and uh, your your moods could influence uh, decision making thought processes creativity and so on in, in diverse ways. As a result, an increasing number of psychologists have recognized the emotion, recognized that emotion play an important role in organizational life. So, if it impacts your cognitions, judgment, decision making, creativity and so on, if emotion can play a significant role in all these, then it can, it will play a significant role in the organizations because organizations is about, you know, cognitive processing, decision making, judgments and creativity and so on. So, if emotion can play a role in all these things, so emotions will play a significant role in organization. So, we cannot kind of completely remove it. So, that is the idea. So, work and emotions are very uh, kind of kind of reciprocally determined means one will influence the other and vice versa. No? So, kind of reciprocally determined concepts workplace and emotions you cannot completely separate them. They will always be connected to each other. So, in one way workplace will influence emotion. So, workplace will lead to a lot of emotional experiences. How? So, a person's profession is one of the key factors of emotional life. So, if you see human life obviously, there is a personal life and a professional life. Both kind of uh, are important aspects of one lives, both kind of enriches one life. So, like personal life, professional life also is a place where you know we experience diverse emotions because workplace is one of the most significant aspect of one's identity and one's life and uh, we spend a large chunk of our everyday life in the workplace. So, it will influence uh, uh, you know uh, uh, our life and our experiences of life in so many ways particularly it will influence different aspects of emotions also. So, work because of its significance in a person's well-being, self-esteem, money, social position is a key source of both positive and negative emotions. So, workplace is a source of all these things which are very important, your well-being, your self-esteem, your money, your social position, uh, it is a source of all these aspects. So, 
and all these aspects are connected to both positive and negative emotions. So, emotions cannot be detached from all these things. We can experience workplace success or failure and uh, have any and all these things can have an impact on our emotional life and health. Uh, so, workplace successes, failures, uh, relationship with the co-workers and so on will have diverse emotional aspects uh, both positive as well as negative. So, workplace is a very kind of rich place where we experience diverse emotions simply because it is one of aspect of our life where we spend a lot of time and, and it kind of uh, gives a platform for diverse uh, emotional experience. Similarly, emotions also kind of influence your work, work, emotion can influence your work. So, the other way around is also true. So, work could influence your emotions. So, similarly emotions can also influence your work. So, emotions on the other hand are among the key drivers of work behavior. So, your emotions whatever you experience either in the personal life or maybe in any other context or in the workplace. So, your emotion will influence your work and your productivity and so on, your achievement it will influence individual productivity, well being and social climate. So, all these things whatever emotion you we experience it will also influence your output, your work and so on. So, emotions can therefore, influence work related cognitive and motivational processes whether you are motivated in your work or not so motivated your emotion will also determine that uh, which in turn can uh, affect task and social behavior as well as performance outcomes. So, all these things actually lot of these things we have already discussed in the module related to cognitions and emotions. So, emotion can influence the diverse aspect of work including productivity, including your behavior, your cognitions and so on. So, it is a kind of reciprocally influence work will influence emotion, emotion will influence your work. So, both cannot be kind of inseparable, both are inseparable from each other. Now, in the context of job or in, ter in terms of professional life, uh, so, jo so, job has certain characteristics, every job has certain distinctive characteristics and those characteristics of uh, jobs actually enhances the relevance of emotional intelligence. So, every job has certain characteristics and those characteristics, some of these characteristics are kind of directly related to emotional in intelligence. So, if your emotional intelligence would directly influence those aspect of your job directly. So, some of the important uh, job features or characteristics where emotional intelligence can be very relevant. So, this may include, there are many job features that enhance the relevance of emotional intelligence like workplace and jobs requires handling emotionally intense situations and engaging in emotional lever. So, most of the workplaces actually may require handling emotionally intense situations, challenging situation, difficult situation, stressful situations and engaging in emo emotional lever basically means when you consciously control your expression of emotions uh, to reach uh, certain organizational goals you know. So, you cannot express all kinds of emotion all the time in the work setting because there are certain uh, rules that needs to be followed for example, when dealing with customers you cannot be angry all the time. So, you have to manage your expression of emotion all the time. So, so, all th so those aspects are called as emotion lever and um, many jobs requires very challenging stressful uh, situations to handle. Uh, for example, you know doctors profession experience may prolong in, uh, interactions with the emotionally challenging families and their patients. For example, people who are in the medical profession they all the time very emotionally charged situation they need to face uh, and um, emotionally uh, you know charge family members and so on because it is a very emotional situation when a patient comes there may be situations of life and death and so on. So, one has to manage all these challenging emotions one has to kind of uh, deal with lot of emotional labor and so on. So, emotional intelligence could be very relevant in this kind of jobs. Many job performance depends on expression of positive emotions like customer service, sales, recruitment and marketing. Some jobs actually you know are very specifically you know uh, certain emotion oriented uh, job like you know uh, like people who are involved in customer service, sales marketing and so on, they need to be all the time kind of smiling and expressing positive emotions, so that they have a positive impact on other people. So, they have to 
kind of manage and regulate their emotion all the time even though somebody may be you know quarreling with you and uh, may be very negative with you in terms of behavior with you still you have to kind of show a positive emotions and so on so a lot of management of emotion is required in those kind of jobs so emotional intelligence can play a very important role specifically in those kind of jobs uh, in jobs like uh, advertising creative problem solving is a crucial aspect of job and emotions can play a significant role in this so a lot of jobs which requires a lot of creativity and uh, emotions novelty and creativity emotions can play a very important role you have to because you have to connect with uh, let's say advertising you have to make advertisement which are very novel which can emotionally connect with people so emotional intelligence can play a very important role in kind of creating those kind of uh, products and advertisement and so on fourth one is the organization must face and adapt changes and emotional intelligence assist in employees to effectively manage the stress associated with changes in the business strategy and working practices so in today's world all the organization keeps changing all the time you know uh, with the newer technologies newer you know uh, social changing of social structures organizations keeps changing very rapidly so employees also has need to deal with all these new changes so those every change you will have lot of stressful experiences lot of challenges so emotional intelligence can help you to deal and cope with those new changes and you know uh, deal with the uh, more ch- newer challenges in organizations and so on so all these important aspects of uh, jobs and organizational settings uh, kind of uh, you know increases or enhances the relevance of emotional intelligence so this kind of reflects emotional intelligence why it is so important in the workplace context what is the utility of emotional intelligence in the workplace as we have already discussed some of the important aspects uh, we'll see uh, some few more findings much of the fascination in ai in organization context actually stems from uh, premise that ai may play a significant role in making workplace more productive profitable and enjoyable uh, many theories believe that uh, if people or employees are more emotionally intelligent it will make the workplace more productive profitable and enjoyable these are some of the kind of uh, theoretical propositions given by uh, uh, researchers profitable and enjoyable and productive organizations uh, you know uh, may be kind of connected to emotional intelligence the synthesis and integration of explicit cognitive knowledge and emotional knowledge on the side of the person may help us understand what pure logic overlooks and thus helps chart the best safest road to success so many time uh, the emotional aspects can also uh, kind of facilitate lot of uh, decision making and uh, uh, both the combination of cognitive and emotional uh, aspects can you know, give newer insights and help us in help in uh, decision making and so on so so ai has been linked to a wide range of organizational outcomes you know various kinds of organizational outcome has been uh, researchers have been trying to understand what is the connection of all these organizational outcomes with emotional intelligence uh, some of these organizational outcome that we will be discussing today are uh, job performance job satisfaction positive organizational attitude and behavior leadership and organizational stress so let us see each of this uh, variables and how ai is connected to them so job performance uh, actually lot of uh, theorists in uh, in the in the field of emotional intelligence made lot of big claims in terms of performance for example you know uh, people some of the statement like in the corporate world iq gets you hired but eq gets you promoted so these are some kind of big claims uh, many theorists makes uh, which shows that you know you may get hired because of your intelligence but to get promoted and kind of sustainably kind of improve in your uh, job profile you need to have high emotional questions or emotional intelligence so promotion and other thing no emotional intelligence plays more important role so these are some of the claims uh, you know so in the context of job performance uh, research shows that it is uh, generally accepted that uh, general ability or cognitive ability predicts approximately 10 to 30% of the variance in the work performance so in the work performance maybe 10 to 30% is connected to one's ability general abilities and intelligence remaining uh, maybe 90 to 70% is uh, unaccounted you know 
many other factors can influence success of performance. So, one aspect general ability which could contribute to about 10 to 30 percent depending on the different job context and remaining uh, 90 to let us say 70 percent uh, may be explained by many other factors. One of those factors could be emotional intelligence. The unexplained percentage of success appears to be the result of complicated many complicated uh, factors could play out there in terms of performance. Uh, interactions among hundreds of variables could be there EI appears to be one of the prime candidate among them okay, in the performance. So, your general ability obviously will influence apart from that there are many other factors that could influence the performance of your in the context of job EI is one of the prime such factors. So, various aspects and components of EI have been claimed to contribute to workplace uh, performance and productivity. How EI can be linked to performance and productivity? Uh, it is generally said that EI affects one ability to cope with the environmental demands and pressures. So, people with high EI they are able to deal with challenges and pressures and stress. So, they are able to perform better. Workers with high EI are also said to be particularly competent at creating initiative that include incorporating feelings and aesthetics into products. So, particularly uh, EI could be relevant in certain job contexts where more creative input is required, uh, where no more initiative and uh, where the lot of feelings and emotion and aesthetics are required in terms of maybe product designs and so on, their emotional intelligence or emotions can play a very important role in terms of performance. So, people who are more kind of in touch with their own emotions and understanding others emotion, they can kind of design products more aesthetically uh, and bring more emotional aspects in the uh, and mo make more creativity uh, kind of you know include creativity in their work place and in that context their performance will kind of be will be enhanced. So, these are some of the aspects possibility why AI could influence the performance. More emotionally intelligent people are thought to be better at communicating and interesting uh, communicating in interesting and assertive ways helping other feel better in the workplace. So, generally communication is also an important part of emotional intelligence. So, better communication is always an advantage in terms of performance especially if you are in let us say leadership jobs or managerial jobs and so on. EI is also essential for group development and teamwork particularly people who are highly emotionally intelligent they can be very good team player. And people with rigid mind uh, set and uh, not much understanding of others perspective, they cannot work in a team because then they under, there will be lot of conflicts. So, they only look only through their own world views, they cannot understand others perspective. So, then the lot of conflicts and other things could rise, but people who are highly in emotionally intelligent, they can kind of work more harmoniously with other people because they also kind of are flexible, understand others perspective, they do not just always all the time focus on their own stories and so on. So, teamwork uh, wherever there is uh, emotional intelligence plays very important role. So, in that context it will be kind of uh, in influence the performance also. Several uh, let us see some of the empirical findings. Now, these are some of the theoretical claims. Uh, let us see uh, some of the empirical findings in this direction of emotional intelligence and job performance. Uh, studies uh, findings generally are generally inconclusive not all the studies are in the same direction some uh, found positive uh, relationships some found uh, no relationships and so on. So, let us see. So, although EI is sometimes connected with the performance as judged by supervisor ratings and other studies have failed to uncover any link. So, some studies found there is a positive connection between EI and performance some studies did not find any connection. Uh, even when there is a significant correlation between EI and performance, it is usually small magnitude. So, many studies found sometimes positive connections with the EI and performance, but the relationship or correlation coefficient is very small. So, the impact is small and uh, many uh, research actually did not account for many other factors that could influence the performance along with EI like personality factors, general intelligence and so on. So, kind of difficult to separate only the impact of EI. Although the importance of EI for work performance has definitely been overstated. So, some of the claims are uh, kind of overstated in some of the state uh, claims, but EI could be important in the context of performance for certain specific jobs. It may not be uh, may not influence performance in all kinds of job, but some jobs are specifically you know 
the importance of AI is very clearly evident in terms of performance in some kind of jobs. For example, uh, AI may be specially relevant for tasks that requires emotional lever means actively controlling of emotional expression to support work goals like you know people who are in the customer care and so on they need to be all the time you know uh, expressing positive emotions and you know cannot be all the time quarreling and uh, showing anger and so on so in those kind of jobs emotional intelligence is very strongly connected to the productivity and performance and so on sales person for example uh, must show enthusiasm regardless of how they feel or how others are kind of interacting with them so they have to be kind of maintain certain regulation of emotion so in those those kind of job obviously the performance will largely depend on emotional intelligence those 2006 summarized research indicating that emotional intelligence may uh, generate more effective emotional lever in service based occupations so service based occupations may be uh, more kind of where we can see the role of emotional intelligence in performance particularly in service based occupations it relevance may not be uh, that high in all kinds of jobs now let's see uh, the job satisfaction aspect how emotional intelligence is connected to job satisfaction some theory and uh, some empirical research indicates that emotional intelligence people are more satisfied at all so it is possible that people with high emotional intelligence may express more satisfaction in the work also for example in a sample of 314 participant uh, which included sales people teachers college student nurses uh, Baron in 1997 found a significant association between EI scores and job satisfaction scores. So, they found there is a positive connection between uh, EI score and job satisfaction. The higher the year score, there is a more jo job satisfaction ex reported by the participants in different subscales of the scale. Uh, some other study also found uh, the association between managerial EI and employee satisfaction. So, EI level of the manager and how employees are satisfied and their performance uh, data was gathered from about 187 food service per personnel working at 9 different sites of the same restaurant chain. Employee E was found to be related to job satisfaction and performance. Uh, so, that was also another finding that kind of shows uh, EI could be connected to job satisfaction. Obviously, you know. Uh, the not many studies are available so more studies probably you know uh, need to kind of validate lot of these findings uh, and find out more causal connections why this could be the reason so some of the possible reasons uh, uh, some of the researchers kind of already uh, kind of stated what could be the possible reason that people with high ei are also likely to experience or report more job satisfaction so, some of the reasons could be like you know high EI persons are said to use their capacity to assess and control emotions in others allowing them to promote a relationship that increase their own and groups morale. So, that emotional intelligence is very much strongly connected to the whole relationship aspects controlling emotions in others yourself. So, kind of more harmonious relationship. So, that will lead to more satisfaction and more happiness in the work context also. Uh, which may contribute to overall well-being and satisfaction. High EI person may be also better at controlling their emotion and lessen job stress. So, some people uh, who are low in EI, job stress could contribute to lot of negativity, lack of satisfaction and so on. But if you are able to control and manage it, obviously your lack of satisfaction and uh, negativity will be less. So, that can kind of protect from those negativity high EI. Uh, emotional intelligence managers are also better at con con assisting employees in managing their emotions and buffering them from negative events. So, especially if people who are in the leadership positions like managers or whoever is the leaders, if they are high in emotional intelligence, they also look take care of their employees and try to ensure to the best of their capability, ability to assist employees in managing their emotions and uh, emotional experience in the job context to make it better as much as possible. So, that can also enhance satisfaction. Uh, emotionally and intelligent managers are more likely to create a favorable work environment which increases job satisfaction. So, if people are emotionally intelligent in a particular work context, there will be more harmonious and more favorable 
work atmosphere which can also increase job satisfaction and so on. Now, let us see the third uh, another uh, variable positive organizational attitude and behavior how EI can play a role here. So, many paper has linked uh, EI to positive organizational citizenship behavior. So, when we talk about organizational citizenship behavior, we are talking about uh, you know uh, voluntarily when an, an employee intentionally do certain work beyond their job roles which can positively impact the organization. So, it is not then uh, not suppose they may not need not do it as per the specific job profile, but they will do extra out of their voluntary uh, you know with intention to benefit the organization. So, those are called organizational citizenship behavior uh, which promotes the relationships and the positive work climate in the uh, organizations. So, it is like a lot of positive and constructive actions that an employee can take which are not directly related to their job profile or the task they need to do something extra or which are voluntarily done. So, those are called organizational citizenship behavior and uh, some many studies linked EI with higher or positive organizational citizenship behavior. So, according to Abraham, uh, EI would both strengthen organizational citizenship behavior and increase organizational commitment. So, it is theoretically it is proposed that it is likely to increase organizational citizenship behavior and commitment to the organization. Uh, similarly, some other uh, like Jordan and colleagues also contend that EI moderate organizational commitment high EI persons more likely to generate strong emotional commitment even during times of stress and instability. So, more commitment and organizational citizenship behaviors are likely to be connected with the high uh, emotional intelligence. However, not much empirical data is available in this direction uh, or kind of validating lot of these claims. Some studies looked at link of EI with some variables which could be indirectly linked to organizational citizenship behavior like helping behavior and so on. So, for example, some study shows EI uh, is related to altruistic behavior means helping behavior, career commitment and effective commitment to the organization. So, these are all indirectly connected to the organizational citizenship behavior. So, some of the studies shows EI is positively linked to all these things. So, people are more likely to willing to help other employees or co-workers beyond their job profile, especially if they are high in emotional intelligence and so on. They are more likely to be committed and so on. Interpersonal sensitivity, prosocial tendencies, all these are kind of positively connected to EI, altruism and compliance or they are more likely to do things which kind of uh, are kind of uh, they are supposed to do. So, that compliance aspect is also more. So, these are some of the indirect evidences which shows possibly you know uh, EI is uh, kind of will facilitate organizational citizenship behavior. Uh, some of the other findings are like you know satisfaction with the group members, communication within the group all these are positively linked, job dedication, customer orientation and so on. These are this could be all direct indirectly connected to organizational uh, citizenship behavior. The next one is leadership, how EI is connected to leadership. In fact, lot of the research actually uh, focused on leadership aspect because EI plan can play a very significant role in the leadership because leader is the person who need to connect with people, motivate them, kind of influence them, move them towards a goal and so on. Their emotional emotion plays most important role. A good leader can kind of touch the emotions of the fo fo followers. So, in that sense, emotional intelligence can play a very significant role in the leadership uh, aspects. So, leadership is about mobilization of resources to achieve organizational goal. In the organizational context, whatever goal that organization have, how a person is able to mobilize resources to bring about that goal. The better mobilization, the better leadership it is. So, it may involve uh, choosing organizational objectives, planning organizational activities to achieve group objectives, motivating others to achieve the objectives, maintaining cooperation, cooperative interpersonal relationships, teamwork, enlisting support from people outside the group or organization to promote organizational goal and so on. So, all these activities are connected to the leadership. So, leadership is generally considered as an emotional activity. So, you cannot separate emotions from the leader. 
it is from the perspective of both the leader as well as follower so there has to be an emotional connect to be a good leader otherwise you know uh, leadership will not work goldman uh, claimed in his book which is titled as primal leadership uh, that the primary component of leadership is emotion its its, it's emotion is the core of uh, leadership great leaders in fact move us emotionally ignite our emotions and inspire the best in us so that's the kind of uh, important qualities of a leader and these are all emotional in nature thus the main goal of leader is to instill positive feelings in their followers so a successful leader is is a leader who can create positive emotions or instill positive emotion in their followers by their activities and whatever it is so it has been stated that emotional competencies might be relevant in every level of process linking to effective leadership so there is no doubt about it emotion cannot be separated in the from the context of leadership a meta analysis study uh, found that the association between intelligence and uh, leadership is much weaker than previously thought with the correct correl uh, corrected correlation coefficient is only so so it's very less so intelligence can play a role in uh, in leadership but the role is very less the typical general intelligence we are talking about uh, this study implies that iq accounts for around very small percentage around 8% of the variability in leadership effectiveness with the remaining explains in partly by social emotional and motivational factors so leadership success actually largely depends on many other factors including emotional intelligence motivational factors social factors and so on now ei in the empirical uh, literature ei has been mostly connected to a particular type of leadership which is called as transformational leadership style a particular type of leadership style so this leadership style has four basic component one is called as intellectual stimulation so this is the characteristics of transformational leadership style the person who does this kind of leadership they will have these four qualities one is intellectual stimulation which is basically uh, they uh, this, this kind of leader not only challenge the status quo but also encourage followers creatively creativity the leaders inspire followers to try new things and take advantage of the fresh learning chances so leaders influences their intellectual aspect of the followers in a very positively they stimulate in terms of creativity looking at newer things learning uh, newer possibilities and so on just following and doing the same thing again and again and I, i think transformation leaders goes beyond that not just doing everyday activity but more creatively looking at newer aspects and so on so that intellectual stimulation is an important quality of transformational leaderships so they will kind of instill that in within the followers second important characteristic is individualized consideration so that means they will be kind of support individuals followers so even though there may be many followers they will be able to connect with each followers individually in a very unique way uh, this uh, to develop supportive relationship transformation leaders maintain that lines of communication open so that followers can freely uh, contribute ideas and leaders can immediately recognize each followers distinctive con- contribution so one to one connection is also visible or evident in the transformational leadership the third characteristics is inspirational motivation so they are able to inspire followers uh, they have a clear vision and convey it to the followers so that is where inspiration comes you know if leader is confused then uh, they cannot inspire people their vision is very clear and they can convey it with clear communication so that is how they inspire their followers so that is another component and the last one is idealized influence so this transformational leaders act as a model so they they don't not only just ask people to do what they want to do but they also model their own behavior and they kind of keep themselves as a model so they will also do so that others can follow them so that is called an idealized influence so these are four important characteristics of transformational leaders and emotional intelligence has been linked to this kind of particularly this kind of leadership so transformational leadership has been found to have a variety of positive results so this kind of leaderships are considered very positive and it can bring about many positive changes like it could enhance employee satisfaction or subordinate satisfaction it increases trust in leadership employees effective commitment and business unit performance 
So, commitment, performance and everything has been found to be positively linked with transformational leadership. Now, Berling et al. in 2000, they proposed that EI is kind of directly connected to transformational leadership because if you see the component of this transformational leadership, they are directly connected to emotional intelligence aspect. For example, leaders who can manage their own emotions can display self-control, delay gratification could serve as a role model for their followers and build trust and respect for the leader. So, this is connected with the idealized influence and this is an important aspect of emotional intelligence that they can kind of regulate emotion, display self-control and so on. So, people like this can have an idealized influence on other people. So, this idealized influence of the uh, transformational leadership is directly an aspect of emotional intelligence. Similarly, leaders high in EI would be ideally placed to realize extent to which followers expectation could be raised which is kind of inspirational motivation. This aspect is also about understanding the followers, connecting with them and expectations and empathy and so on. So, this is also directly an important aspect of emotional intelligence. Third is a major component of individualized consideration is the ability to understand followers need, show empathy and manage relationship. So, that is individualized consideration is also directly connected to emotional intelligence because uh, only uh, indi individualized consider consideration is possible only when the person is able to understand each and every followers need their perspective and has empathy to kind of understand their perspective. Uh, so, that is also directly connected to emotional intelligence. So, by definition transformational leadership and its component are actually part of emotional intelligence. So, it is very, very strongly connected to each other. So, several research actually showed also empirical uh, support to this concept of EI and transformational leadership. Some of the findings are here. Uh, for example, Bass found that empirical evidence which showed that social and emotional intelligence outperform cognitive intelligence as predictor of transformational leadership. So, emotional uh, intelligence was directly a most significant uh, predictor of transformational leadership. Uh, research also found that uh, <clears throat> the link between several aspects of EI and leadership, the data however not totally consistent with some research revealing some findings, but most of the research actually showed there is a positive uh, relationship. So, when all the available data are evaluate, uh, evaluated, the evidence generally appears to support the concept that EI is associated with several indexes of transformational leadership style, uh, but some of the aspect could be you know not still clear. But you know, this is something very empirically established fact. So, the last one is organizational stress, how uh, EI is connected to that. In fact, stress management and everything is directly connected in included in the definition of EI itself. So, a number of occupational psychologists uh, have conceptualized stress in organizational context is about when between the persons and the environment interaction based on the transactional model of stress. So, job stress occurs when demands opportunities are thought to threaten a person's attentional or coping capabilities. So, we experience stress only when the demand and the challenges that we face are perceived as threatening or exceed our ability to handle them. So, the moment we ex kind of experience or perceive something that we will not be able to handle whatever demand is coming, then the resultant outcome is a stress. So, this could happen in the organizational context, gender life context and so on. So, emotional intelligence uh, people who are proponent of the concept of emotional intelligence have suggested that you know obviously, the better knowledge and uh, regulation of one's emotion can drastically improve personal coping abilities. So, emotional intelligence is directly connected to the regulation of emotion, so which is connected to the coping. So, people who are high in EI also more likely to cope, cope better in the stressful situations, uh, which can lead to many adaptive outcomes. So, EI uh, generally should be systematically linked to individual differences in coping and uh, should confer more or less effective results in the individual. Uh, so, in general EI researcher believe that uh, how people identify, understand, control and heal emotions influences coping behavior and result in adaptive outcomes. So, EI is directly connected to better coping abilities. So, coping abilities better means you are able to handle stress much better ways. So, in the organizational context also one will be able to better manage and deal with the challenges and stressful circumstances uh, in the job context also. Uh, so, mostly uh, they 
people who are highly emotional intelligent they are more likely to use problem focus coping which is very uh, effective strategy solving problem rather than ruminating over why what should, should i do and other thing if there is a problem needs to be done the person will have to directly address the problem and uh, take social support and so on all these positive coping strategies are connected to social uh, emotional intelligence so they can be using all these adaptive coping strategies and as a result they are more likely to uh, uh, effectively deal with the or cope with the stresses uh, some research have found relationship between stress indicators and ei, EI scales when looking for many additional factors like uh, ei has been linked to assessment of interpersonal facilitation and stress tolerance so ei has been linked to higher stress tolerance other studies discovered that ei was connected to lower level of burnout as well as higher level of work engagement so people are less likely to experience burnout in the work contest and so on so why why what are the kind of mechanism possible mechanism that ei is linked to better coping and uh, low stress occupational stress so two possible mechanisms could be proposed one is handling organizational change so person people with higher em emotional intelligence they are able to handle the changes rapidly changing organizations whatever is there in that especially in the present scenario and managing emotional lever which we discussed ability to control emotion expression of emotions for bringing about organizational goal so for example no sales person other thing we say have to be pos all the time positively expressing emotions even though the situation may be very negative so ei facilitate those and as a result they are able to kind of manage occupational stress more so st studies basically uh, supporting this model include uh, predi um, ei predicted more positive attitude towards organizational change so people are able to better deal with the change uh, trait ei was also connected to lower job stress and so on so empirical research are also in line with this model so some research also found that ei is a predictor of emotional lever means they are able to better manage uh, in terms of expression of emotions which is required to reach a goal and so on uh, there is also evidence of uh, correlation between trait ei and stress symptoms were partially but not entirely mediated by emotional lever and so on so the idea is uh, empirical kind of studies also support these two mechanisms so these are some of the findings that shows that ei could be very significant and relevant in the work context although some of the claims are kind of overstated uh, but empirical research shows the various aspects of emotion em emotional intelligence can play, play a significant role in diverse variables related to workplace and job context uh, and uh, can bring out many positive uh, aspect impacts in the behavior of the people working in a job situations with this i stop here thank you mm -hmm.